morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning to those that joined us on Facebook, YouTube, as we celebrate with the saints whose family founded the Eastern Church. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this new day. We give you thanks for the rest of the past night. And for the challenges that you will present to us that will enable us to reflect your love, your peace, and your glory. We give you thanks for this occasion as we celebrate Founders Day. We give you thanks for the St. Hugh's family. And pray that as we gather physically and virtually, you will bless us and guide us in this or act of worship. That in all we do and in all we say, we may bring honor and glory to your name. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Opening him. giving me this morning thank you for every day that's new thank you that i can know my worries can be cast on you thank you for all my friends and brothers thank you for all the men that live thank you for even greatest enemies i can forgive thank you for many Thank you for every kindly word. Thank you for everywhere your guidance reaches every land. Thank you, I see your word has meaning. Thank you, I know your spirit's here. Thank you, because you love all people, those both far and near. Thank you, oh Lord, your love is boundless. Thank you. Blessed be the Lord our God. Blessed be His Son Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Spirit of God. Father, we come together in the name of your Son Jesus Christ to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Day of Saint Hugh, Psalm 15. We will read alternate verses. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless and does what is right, keeps the feet in his path. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not take his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the weak. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God written in Micah chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, 
to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines, and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken the word of God.
soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us that no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. There ended the word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the Word of God, written in Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 to 47. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. The word of the Lord.
on talking, keep on talking to me. Talk to me. Keep on talking, keep on talking to me. Talk to me. Keep on talking, keep on talking to me. Talk to me. Keep on talking, keep on. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me your words that will bring you life. Words on the wings of the morning, the dark night will fade away. If you speak to my heart, Lord, speak to my heart. Oh, that's what I want to do. Message of love. Love to encourage you. Lifting my heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Recalibrating. Repositioning. Rekindling. Blazing a trail of excellence. If our lives ended today, how would those around us assess our contribution to our fellow citizens? Our example leaves an impression on others. That is what I believe led the founders of St. Hugh's and indeed many of the educational and the social institutions to make the effort to create the lasting legacy 
we have today. And the excellence that they strive to encourage and instill in ensuing generations. The legacy is this. It is from the position of a relationship with God and the challenge to grow a people of faith and love and purity of life that they created the legacy we have today. So our challenge as a present cohort of students and staff of St. Hughes is to recalibrate, to reposition and rekindle as we seek to continue to blaze a trail of excellence. With God's help, let the growth we experience and the example we leave be one of love, faith, and purity of life. The book of Titus captures the pattern God gave for every believer and the direction of their life. Being a Titus chapter 2 person of godliness should be the desire of every believer and well-thinking person for their own life. Paul urges us to let our lives be a model, template, or pattern for others to follow. We are to warn the unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and to be patient with all. In other words, we are to be Christ-like in everything we do, say, or think. The more we ignore or neglect God's truth, the further away from him we slide, and the more eroded our society becomes. So he challenges us to be morally pure. God has built into each of us an alarm system to warn, warn us of the unwanted entry of sin into our lives. It is called guilt. And so without guilt, we would continue to live in sin until it dominates and defeats us. Whenever the alarm goes off, we are to heed it and respond with repentance. Doing what is right is more important than winning. We are to recalibrate. To put it bluntly, people in our society are rusting from the inside out. Their souls are corroded and slowly wasting away from the corrosive power of the sea of moral pollution they navigate each day. Each day we walk through life, we are sprayed with the salt-like corrosive fog of the world that seeks to eat up the strength of our souls to corrode the framework of our spiritual lives and to decay us secretly on the inside. And this is not seen by anyone except God. And so we need to reposition ourselves in order that we may attain the highest standard. We are not left alone on earth merely to know for ourselves what God has said but rather to share his good news with others. When we share the good news, we must do so with a gentle, respectful delivery, but also with the same zeal that was shown by Peter. Paul told Titus that he should come alongside every young person by sending old per older persons in the faith to lovingly and gently nurture the youth in the faith so as to avoid the corrupt, corrosive influences that would affect them. In modern times, that would mean guarding against the corruption of things such as greed, envy, and sexual immorality to recalibrate and reposition ourselves. Purity is an uncorroded choice we make by God's grace and through the power of his spirit. Believers who are prompted by grace must never allow themselves to succumb to the way of the world. To be uncorroded believers, we must saturate ourselves with God's word and invite him daily 
into our lives. We must not be afraid, for God will give us the strength that we need. By doing so, we will easily disarm our opponents. We need to allow ourselves to be trained in all the things we need to know, believe, and practice as children of God, so that we can be prepared to handle all kinds of situations in a biblical manner. We must be wise in how we do this. Our participation in and growth from the legacy of those of our forebears affords us the privilege of shining God's light on a hurting world. We have the hope of eternal life in heaven as well as God's comforting presence on earth. When we allow that hope to transform us, everyone we touch wants some of it. So a big part of recalibrating and repositioning ourselves is to come into full relationship with God in and through Jesus the Christ. We need to mention the faith we have and what we do understand of that faith and to trust the Holy Spirit, therefore to help us to speak. It can make the difference between life and death for others. And so we must always be prepared to share our personal testimony and to include in that personal testimony three basic points. What life was like before we received Christ. How it is we came into this relationship with Christ and what difference Christ has made in our lives. Rekindling means we, re we prepare ourselves to hear the word of God for our own lives. We prepare ourselves to listen for the voice of God in our affairs because doing so gives us hope. And hope is how we view tomorrow. Hope is how we are defined as Christians. Hope is what drives us to add to the legacy we have received. Each Christian has gifts that are important not only to the church but for the building up of the common good. Paul tells Titus that the young people who want to grow up to be godly and mature servants of God must begin to cultivate six qualities while they are young. They are to live a restrained life in an unrestrained world to follow Christ in a Christless world, to believe right and so to behave right, to stay focused on God in a world of destruction, to treasure each other's gifts, and to share each other's sorrows and rejoice in each other's joys. We are all part of one another. To be sure, Christ calls us as individuals, but we are part of the whole, not the whole. Creativity and innovations can be wonderfully visible gifts for Christ's holy church. They can also be ways for precious human beings to be misled in directions that produce questionable fruit. Christ was born into this world so that others who follow him will look after their fellow men and women to accept life and live it in a fashion that means Christ is always with us. Because the gifts of serving, the gifts of serving others are continually being bestowed upon humankind. We must be alert because there are a lot of really good deeds all about us. When we gather as the people of God, when we hear God's word, we have to decide if we are going to be just hearers of the word or doers of the word. We must do whatever it takes to starve the evil desire of our flesh and those of our families. We are, put on, we are to put on Christ by denying the baser desires of human nature. 
We are to give Christ our unfettered, focused life, service, and gift. We can keep from wasting the most precious years of our lives by grabbing onto the changes energized by grace. Grace that God wants to make inside of us so that we will be the people he can use to maximize the kingdom, to maximize his purposes and plan for this world. We are to allow ourselves to be rekindled in God's grace. Friends, we are encouraged to be patient when persecuted for righteousness' sake. Just like Christ suffered patiently, we are to give ourselves wholly to God and be willing to suffer and do what is right, especially if it is God's will that, as, that we as Christians suffer for doing good. We sanctify God before others when our conduct invites and encourages them to glorify and to honor God. We should be able to defend our faith with meekness in the fear of God. For we owe it to our fellow Christians to stand up in the defense of their reputation. And we are under special obligations to those from whom we have received the benefit, especially spiritual benefit, to own them as instruments of God's hand of good to us. There are certain traits that should characterize a believer who serves the Lord. We are to obey him in doing good work. So that others can see God's love and kindness through us. We are to teach God's words with passion and conviction. So that others will learn to follow Christ in obedience. And we are to live with dignity, fleeing from sin, and living in submission to his will. Because we realize that we represent him in the world and the rewards Christ has reserved for us are awesome. So today as we celebrate another Founders Day, let us reflect on our own lives individually and the legacy we have re received from those who were inspired to start schools and other social institutions so that we may benefit for the building up of the common good. And let us seek to recalibrate, to reposition and rekindle as we seek to continue to blaze a trail of excellence. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried, descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Collect for the Feast Day of St. Hugh of Lincoln. Holy God, our greatest treasure, you bless Hugh, Bishop of Lincoln, with wise and cheerful boldness for the proclamation of your word to the rich and poor alike. Grant that all who minister in your name may serve with diligence, discipline, and humility, caring nothing but the loss of you and drawing all to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the communion of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue our prayers this, at this time, your response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and the world. Creator God, in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, pleasures forevermore. Thank you for making known to us the path of life. As the world experiences this global pandemic, climate change, human trafficking, discrimination, violence against women, child abuse, the sea of moral corruption, and other crises, may the church minister to the world in meaningful, relevant ways and promote love, healing, and reconciliation with you and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our beloved country, Jamaica. Living God, thank you for our beautiful country filled with brilliant, talented, hardworking people. We pray for peace, in our nation. Deliver us, Lord, from corroding souls and the decay on the inside. May the perpetrators of violence beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks, lay down their guns and learn war no more. And may communities no longer be afraid. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our children and young people. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the precious children of this land. May they grow to know how much you love them and all the blessings you have in store for them. Protect our children, Lord, and all our young people from harm and danger especially in their homes, on the roads, when they are online, and as they interact with each other. We pray for families and all who have the care of children. O oh Lord, may we come alongside our youth to prevent moral decay. As the Anglican Church observes Diocesan Youth Week, may all those involved draw nearer to you and impact the world around them to follow you. We pray that our children will remember you, Creator God, in the days of their youth. Lord, in your mercy, 
Let us pray for the St. Hugh's family. Loving God, thank you that your grace offers salvation to all people. As St. Hugh's High and Prep Schools celebrate 122 years, may you strengthen all stakeholders to remain faithful and loyal. Thank you for the legacy of our founders, especially the Deaconess Order. Bless our school boards, principals, vice principals, all staff, administrative, ancillary, and academic. We pray, Lord, for our parent teachers associations, our past students associations, and all our students. Thank you for our swans and cygnets, Lord. May they continue to blaze a trail of excellence as they follow the example of good St. Hugh. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for the sick and remember the departed. Comforting God, you tell us to be ready because Jesus will come at an hour when we do not expect him. Heal those, O oh Lord, who are sick, we pray. Give wisdom and compassion to all healthcare workers and providers. Lord, we pray today as we hold the cup of joy and sorrow. We celebrate our school family today. We also pray that you comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Today we remember the departed especially Daphne Morrison, Cassandra Austin, Rochelle Grant, Pauline Broom Webster, Cheryl Brown, Chanel Brown, Barbara Chavans, Linda Chin Yi, Claudette Faye Durant, Patricia Eves McKenzie, Judith Grace Hamilton, Joan Hendrick, Isbeth Jackson Lindo, Pauline Knight, Marlene Joy Logan Morris, Sister Angela Harris, Sharon Malcolm, Nadisha Roberts Green, Glory Robertson, Camille Rowe, Yvonne Simmons, Karen Smith Jackson, Shelley Anglin Smith, Kay Crawford Swaby, Loris Townsend Abrams, Leonie Marie Hines Smith and Denise Mills. Lord, in your mercy, receive these prayers in the name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and with
For the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sun. Brothers and sisters, you will admit that this has been a very challenging year for us as a nation, for us as a school, family, as well as for us individually. We have lost loved ones through the pandemic and other illnesses. And so today we will light three candles in memory of our loved ones. The first candle will be in memory of Daphne Morrison and the loved ones of staff. The second candle to be lit will be in memory of Rochelle Grant and loved ones of students. The third candle will be lit in memory of Karen Smith and other swans. And we'll pray as we light these candles in their memory that we will cherish those memories and that we will be light in the world of doubt, of fear, of sin, and of darkness. And we will pledge to let our light so shine among men and women that they may see our good works and bring glory and honor to our Father in heaven and glory to the school of St. Hughes. So I'd like to invite Elisa Francis to light the first candle. and can we not believe.
or candle. The souls of the faithful are in the hands of God. There shall no torment touch them. Pray that God will give rest to all his children who have passed from this land the land of glory. A prayer for all souls. Eternal Lord God, you hold all souls in life. Give to your whole church in paradise and on earth your light and your peace. And grant that we, following the good examples of those who have served you here and are now at rest, May at last enter with them into your unending joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rest eternal granted them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.
Archdeacon of Kingston and Rector of St. Luke's Church, the Venerable Patrick Cunningham. Today's preacher and force chaplain of the Jamaica Defense Force, Lieutenant Colonel the Reverend Denston, Denston Smalling, Assistant Curate of the St. Luke's Church, the Reverend Elizabeth Riley, Chairman of the Board of Management, the very Reverend Canon Major Dr. Serrano Kitson, and other members of the board. Past principals, distinguished guests, including Territorial Officer Mrs. Hazel Masters Williams, Principal of the St. Hughes Preparatory School, Mrs. Sasha Wright, President of the St. Hughes High School Past Students Association, Dr. Suzanne Fatokan, and other past students. President of the Parent Teachers Association, Ms. Terry Ann Wallace. Vice Principals, Mrs. Keisha Ann Jones Spooner and Ms. Alicia Francis. School Chaplain, Mrs. Nicola Elliott. Members of the Academic, Administrative, and Ancillary Staff. Head Girl, Ms. Theroni Hunt. Deputy Head Girls, Ms. Regine Bennett and Ms. Sheena Henriquez. Signets and swans, parents and other well-wishers, ladies and gentlemen who have joined us here in the virtual space and physically, good afternoon. It is my absolute delight to welcome you as we celebrate through this service of Thanksgiving, our 122nd Founders Day. The book of Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 reminds us that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And so this is our time and season to pay homage to our forefathers who laid a firm foundation so that St. Hugh's High School continues to be recognized as a leading all-girls institution. This year, we not only revel in our legacy, but also our tenacity and diverse levels of adaptability, adaptability as demonstrated by our students, staff, and other stakeholders during these fluid times of change and trials for the entire world. As a community of individuals who thrive on excellence, we are committed to delivering outstanding education to our students in their development of the four C's, critical thinking, creativity, communication, and collaboration. This they will do as they are molded into human beings who display sound moral principles supported by competent and dynamic faculty and staff coupled with efficient systems. After all, Martin Luther King Jr. puts it best when he contends intelligence plus character. That is the goal of true education. Since our 122 years of existence, we have always enjoyed solid and spirited partnerships with our various stakeholder groups, and today is a testament to that. It would be remiss of me to not extend gratitude to everyone who has contributed to the success of this Foundation, foundation Day service. To the clergy, lecturers, cantors, soloists, musicians, dancers, choreographer, technical team, members of the special events committee, support staff, and to you, our gracious congregation. Thank you for sharing with us on this fantastic occasion. As we continue on the path of recalibrating, repositioning, rekindling, blazing a trail of excellence, we remain ordered by the words of our school song, particularly in stanza two. We build our name and spread our fame and honor good St. Hugh when we bring to task or gain the best that we can do. In willing service, ordered rule, and duty fairly met, we'll write a record for our school that time shall ne'er forget. Happy St. Hugh's Day 2021, Fidelita. Dr. Susanna Token, president of the St. Hugh's Past Students Association, will now deliver her greetings via a video recording. Immediately after that, I invite 
Mrs. Sasha Wright, and head girl Theroni Hunt to join me in the cake cutting exercise. Thank you. Good morning. As the Swan Nation celebrates Founders Day, 17th November, the St. Hughes Pass Students Association recognizes those who came before and set the pace, for example, with the purchase of this beautiful property at One Linster Road and surroundings, and who wrote the motivational words of our school song. We remember those who have led us to excellence over the years, some of whom are recognized by the Past Students Association the past Distinguished year, whether through Past the Student pandemic Award or otherwise. And many other awards. We are a school. In particular, we remember those school who have passed on just strong over the past year, swans, whether through the pandemic or otherwise. Excellence in all we, we are do. a school built on excellence. Please note that a school where young students grow into strong, graceful swans fame, who will soar and achieve excellence in but all we do. TikTok. Please note that excellence, excellence is not to be is equated with fortune or fame, or extremely especially at what popular we do, but short-lived or say talk or thing. But rather, excellence as part of the is a quality of being Saint outstanding Jesus or extremely we good. Are taught as in whatever the words of our we do, song, or when say, we bring or to task or game, the best as part that of we the legacy because of Saint Hughes High School. Best. Is we are taught, as in the words in of our school song, and in hard when every bring to task or game, those around the best us are that we can do, or not. because the only our best the is good enough. Swimming pool walls, in easy times by the Saint and in hard students times, association, whether those ago, around us are excelling excellence. or not. It was painted to the remind us on to the blaze a swimming pool walls, commissioned by the Saint Hughes Pass Students Association a few years ago, depict excellence. It was painted to remind us to blaze a trail for excellence. Fidelitas.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
we stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord let the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. God has been good, allowing us to see 122 years. And we believe this closing song is fitting. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endured for us. Feel free to join in, to sing, to clap, and to celebrate the legacy of St. Hugh.
on behalf of the St. Luke family, I'd like to extend congratulations and well wishes to the St. Hugh High School family and pray that as you recalibrate, reposition and rekindle and blaze a trail of excellence that God will journey with you in these challenging times. Please be assured of our prayers for you as a school family and that we are willing and able to help in what